It's 2023 and I'm opening up Taxi Driver from Waxwork Records. Let's cue the music. Hello and welcome to the show. It's Ralph. I got Tiny Knife. It's a new year. It's actually New Year's Day is the day that this is dropping. Um, if you watched my last unboxing where I talked about Danny Elfman's Spider-Man from Sony Classical, I said that I probably wouldn't receive a new record before the end of the year. And guess what? One showed up. I decided I'm going to record it. I'll post it up on New Year's Day. And Taxi Driver will be the one to kick off 2023. Uh, also, what's great about 2023 is it's the 10th anniversary of Waxwork Records. So I just want to say happy anniversary to them. Um, I look forward to seeing what you guys have planned this year. And I plan to do plenty of unboxings uh, uh, as long as they're not horror movies. Because <laughs> here's the thing, like I'm not a horror movie fan. I love Waxwork, but I like sci-fi. I like action. Um, Taxi Driver is great. If you look at any of my unboxings for uh, Waxwork movies, they're usually Toho related. Or or if I guess horror would be Monsters and Sleepy Hollow. But they're not like some of the other horror movies that they do. So, Waxwork, happy anniversary. Please do a reissue of Godzilla King of the Monsters so I can do a boxing here and I'll have all of my MonsterVerse records um, that are available because the secondary market is nuts for that one. Um, so happy anniversary. Uh, looking forward to what you have in store. Um, this is a reissue, Taxi Driver. Um, I never got my hands on it um, because it came out before I was really collecting records. And um, I was kind of bummed about it. And then they reissued it last month, which is great because um, I wanted to get it. But I don't really buy records in December because Christmas is coming and I have a very, very big Christmas list. Um, and I don't want someone to get me a gift that's... Um, that's uh that i already bought so my sister sarah was cool enough to get me a big fat ass gift card from waxwork records and um i think the after this one including this one uh there'll be three more unboxings throughout the year um that all come from my sister's gift card so thank you sarah for that waxwork record Great pull. And I want to talk about Bernard Herman for a little bit. This score is his final score that he ever did. I'm a huge fan of this score. This is a double. This is a double LP. Uh, artwork by Rich Kelly. Um, it looks great. It's got a yellow and black vinyl. Uh, it kind of has. A, they say pinwheel, but it's like a. It looks like a. Uh, like a lollipop mixed with an Abba Zabba bar um but i love this score it was bernard herman's final score and not only was it his final score but he passed away the day after they were finished recording the score so it's pretty crazy he died on new year or christmas eve um 1975 and what's crazy is this is his final score did you know what his first score is I found this out recently. I know he had scored this scored this picture, but I just found out what his first score was. And his first score ever, oh, got a nice um, postcard. I need to start storing these somewhere. Right now they're just kind of bookmarks. Um, his first score was Citizen Kane. Not a bad, bad place to start. His last score, Taxi Driver. Not a bad place to finish. Um, here I have uh, the little insert, the packing insert, and this is Mothra, which I have been unboxing for that. And this was packaged by Luke. I don't know if I've gotten Luke before, but uh, Luke, you're my only hope. Because there's a big ass ding in this um, in this mailer. 
but Luke, where the ding hit was on the bubble wrap. So, uh, good job. Good job on avoiding the ding. So here it is, taxi driver. And again, sorry about the um, any reflections we get while the while the thing is here, the plastic. Um, I am going to let's get in on this hype sticker. So a friend of mine on Twitter was commenting that the artwork or the front cover doesn't say Bernard Herman's name, but it is on the hype sticker. It is on the back, which here's the artwork. We're going to take this plastic off, but there's the hype sticker. You want to go ahead and read that. That has all the information about this release. And I believe this is a second re-release or the second release. Um, I'm not sure. This is a double disc. I think I said that before. It has a nice gatefold. I've seen the gatefold art. I've seen this art. This is one of those records that I would always go to Waxwork and uh, take a look at because um, A, I love the score. And B, I wanted the score. So I'd go see if it were uh, if it was ever re-released. So wow, this Rich Kelly art is pretty stunning. Pretty stunning. Let's take a look at that. Here you go. Um, I am recording this, and I'm going to start recording these at a higher quality. So I don't know if this is 4K or not, but you should be able to look at that. It has a nice matte finish. It feels really good. And then let's take a look at the gatefold. And the gatefold is a pretty much the crime scene. For those of you that haven't seen um, Taxi Driver, this might be a spoiler. I don't know. Uh, but go watch Taxi Driver. It's this layout of the crime scene. Look at that. This artwork's amazing. The detail is pretty astounding. And let's look at the back. Let's get this, uh, get that in there for you, the barcode, so you can add that to your Discogs want list or your Discogs um, um, collection list. Look at this art. Like it just feels like 70s New York. Um, here's your track list. It looks like it's got like a handwritten font to it. I'm not sure if it's handwritten. Um, it looks handwritten because I, I, I've studied, um, typography and there's not, um, there's not really uniformity to the text. So this, this feels definitely handwritten. If someone from Waxwork or anybody else really, uh, could let me know in the comments below if this is actually all handwritten, um, text, it appears to be. All right, let's see what we got inside here. We've got a liner notes with the classic cover for the old album. It's just the image of Robert De Niro. And on the back is a black and white picture of Robert De Niro with Mark Scorsese. Now, um, I've only seen this movie once and it was only a few years ago for the first time. I thought it was great. It's not the happiest movie. It's not like a feel good movie that I put on all the time, but, um, I think it's terrific. I should I should give it another watch. I've been listening to this score since probably like 1996. Um, when I got my first job, I started just stopping at Tower Records um, on my way to work every Tuesday. I think that's when new CDs came out. And I would just pick stuff up. And then I found out about Bernard Herrmann because I knew that Danny Elfman, who I was already a fan of, there you got liner notes written by Martin Scorsese and a picture of Travis Bickle. So that's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, I knew Danny Elfman was a Bernard Herrmann fan. And so I started getting his stuff and like, I mean, Vertigo, Psycho, North by Northwest, like the Alfred Hitchcock ones I got. Uh, but there's some that I like that weren't Hitchcock were um, Journey to the Center of the Earth, which if you listen to one of the tracks, it's uh, what Danny Elfman used uh, for the main titles opening of the main titles of the Batman theme. Um, and then uh, there's one that I really, really like is Beneath the 12 Mile Reef, which never has been put on vinyl. I'm begging, if there's any 
person out there who loves that score and has access to vinyl pressing, like if I can get a copy of Beneath the 12 Mile Reef on vinyl by Bernard Herrmann, that would be great. Um, not a not a movie that a lot of people have heard about, but the music from that movie was used in episodes, I believe the pilot episode of Lost in Space. So the music might be familiar to pe- fans of that show, but I love Beneath the 12 Mile Reef. If you can track it down, uh, Film Score Monthly released uh, uh, a, a CD of it, about oh God, probably 98, 90, 1999 or something. Um, but uh Bernard Herman I absolutely love um and I f- and I, I I can't wait to check out these so we're going to take a look at the this first we'll just look at the label you can kind of see the the vinyl peeking through the back there and then you got a wheel with the white wall on it let's take this out and see what the yellow and black pinwheel looks like wow so they did a smash up job on this. I'll try to angle it so you can see it better. But look at that. The yellow is uh, translucent uh, and the black is opaque. <laughs> but look at that, it looks good. Usually sometimes when you see these sort of designs in the pictures, they always look better than when they show up. Um, but waxwork did a great job getting this done um man waxwork i'm really looking forward to what they have in 2023 because they're opening up their own record pressing plant so they'll be able to have like full control of how these things go out and uh and like they don't have to rely on anybody else to do their uh, to do their work for them so this one's the same, same artwork on the back and on the front. And yeah, this swirl, this this pinwheel, as they call it, is a lot of fun. It's got that taxi yellow and black. But Waxwork, I mean, congratulations. I mean, for 10 years, uh, you guys have really sort of come into your own. Um, and I, I love what you're doing over there. I would prefer less horror stuff like Taxi Driver. Um, uh, maybe a repress of Nightbreed. I have an original pressing of Nightbreed by Danny Elfman, which I absolutely love. But I wouldn't mind that the, the Waxwork version. So maybe bring that. And then TMNT. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1. Um, I, I need a copy of that. The secondary market on Waxwork is nuts. And I'm so happy that Waxwork does frequent repressing so that... Uh, They kill the secondary market. And if you kill the secondary market, that means you get less people trying to buy up all the stock right when it drops. And that leaves uh, more for us collectors. So keep it up. Keep it up. Um, This taxi driver, Bernard Herman, I love the score. I, I got this yesterday in the mail and I'm like, I can't wait to do this unboxing. I'm doing it the first thing in the morning um, just because I can go listen to it right away. So thank you. Uh, I look forward to uh, what this channel has in store for you in 2023. Uh, I appreciate the support and I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye. Bye.